Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the previous part we created a very basic setting screen, which contains all the elements that are supposed to be there in the final version, naturally without any functionality added yet. Today we're going to rewrite the code using class rules to make our lives easier. But first, let's have a look at what we have. Here's the code again. First, the Python file, very simple. And here's the Kiwi file. Pretty long, right? Well, 360 lines of code, including comments and blank lines. If you look closer at the code, you can see right away that it's very repetitive. Have a look. For example, here we have player 4, and we have player 3, player 2, almost the same code. And this is definitely a drawback. We're going to reduce the amount of code by extracting repetitive code into class rules. But before we do that, Let's run the program again to see what the settings screen looks like at this stage. Let's resize the window a bit. Fine. Naturally, it's not the final version yet, but today we're not going to change anything in the visual representation of the screen, but rather just refactor the code. Now, Let's get to work. You already know what class rules are. We use the class rule class notation when we were creating custom widgets. So the idea is that you can define a class rule above the root widget and then use it inside the root widget just like any other widget. I think it will be much easier to understand if we work on an example. So let's run the program again. Now, as you look at this, app window, you will see there's a lot of text. This means there are lots of labels. As far as font size is concerned, there are three sizes of text. Most of the text is pretty small. The two titles, the players and ending conditions are larger and the screen title settings is even larger. Now let's have a look at how these labels are represented in code. Here are some examples of the small font size labels. First, the label that reads one player over here in the radio button section. Here it is, one player. And as you can see, it has four properties, text, text size, H align, V align. Now text is one player, text size is self size, H align is left, V align is center. Now let's have a look at the name header, which is somewhere here, fine, label, name, this is this one here, now the text is name, size hint x is none, width 700, text size self size, h align left, v align center. Now as you can see these three properties, text size, h align and v align are just the same as before. And now one more example, let's look at one more label, for example, here in the ending condition section. Here we have the label. The game is over not later than after a given number of races. The game is over not later than after a given number of races over here. Now, here we have the same properties, text size set to self size, H align to left and V align to center. So as you can see, all these labels share some properties and these three properties, text size, H align and V align are set to the same values. 
They also have the text property, but it's set to a different value for each label. Also, the name header label contains some more properties, like size hint x and width. Anyway, we can extract the three shared properties, text size, age align, and v-align, into a custom label, which is a subclass of label. As this is going to be the most used label in our code, let's name it regular label. Now let's go above the root widget and create a class rule. So regular label inherits from label. And here we have the three shared properties. Now with the regular label defined, we can now use this class instead of label in our code. So let's find the three labels again. The first one is over here. And let's replace label with regular label. And we don't need these three shared properties anymore because they are in the class rule. So this is one. Now the name header, regular label. And we can get rid of these three shared properties. And also here, here we have a regular label and we don't need these three shared properties. Anyway, as you can see now, the repetitive code is gone and only the code that makes each label unique remains. So in our case, the text property, for example, here. And now have a look at the larger font size labels used for the titles. So here's the players label. We have text, the players, now font size 20, size hint 1, none, height 30. Now text size, self size, H align left, V align center. And another one like this is over here for the ending conditions. Here we have text, ending conditions, font size 20, size hint 1, none, height 30, and these three properties just the same as before. So the first thing you notice is that they also contain the code shared in the regular label class. So we can create a new class that inherits from a regular class. Besides, there are three properties with the same values. Font size, size hint, and height. So we can move them to the new class. So let's add a new class rule above the root widget Let's go there first. And the name title label sounds fine to me. So let's define it like so. It inherits from regular label. So it contains all the three properties from regular label plus these three properties which are shared by the two instances of the labels we just saw. And now we can rewrite our title labels using the title label class. So here's the first one. Instead of label, we use title label. Now font size, size hint, height, text size, age line, and v line are all shared. So we can get rid of these. Now it's much simpler. And the same here. Here, we replace this with the title label. And again, these properties are shared. So it's simplified again. It's much more concise, isn't it? And now for the largest label with the screen title settings over here, we could create a class for it too, but let's take a different approach this time. This label actually only differs from the title label by font size, which is 28. If you set a property on a widget instance to a different value than defined in the class rule, it will override it. So here we can replace this label by title label and then just override the font size. So we can get rid of this because it's shared in the title label. And now this value overrides 
this value specified over here. So although the default font size defined in the title label class is 20, in this particular title label it is set to 28, which makes the text larger. This is how we can easily override values for particular widgets. And now I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to replace all the label instances with regular label or title label, which would be rather boring for you to watch. There are pretty many of them, right? So I'll just replace them and then we'll continue when I'm done with that. Okay, I'm done replacing the labels with regular label and title label instances. And now, if you scan the code carefully from top to bottom, you will see that there are some regular labels that still share some properties. For example, the four regular labels with the generic names of the players, like this one here. Regular label text player1 size hint none none width 80 height 30. And we have regular label player2 size hint again none none width and height 80 and 30 respectively, just like here. And then we have the same code for player 3 and 4. So here only the text should be different, so we can create a custom label with all the other properties. A characteristic feature of these labels is that they have a specific width and height, 80 by 30. So let's call the class regular 80 by 30 label. Let's add the class rule over here. So naturally, this new class inherits from regular label and we set here the width and height to 80 and 30 respectively. And now, of course, we can replace all the occurrences of this particular regular label with these dimensions with this regular 80 by 30 label class. So let's do that. Okay, here we don't need this anymore. And for player two and for player three and for player four. Fine. Next, we have the four regular labels with the dollar sign, which you can see here. Regular label text dollar sign size hint none none width 20 height 30. This is for player 3, but we have the same here for player 2. Text dollar sign size hint none none width and height 20 and 30 respectively. And the same for player 1 and player 4, of course. Now they all have the same width and height. And besides, they even have the same text. So why not create a dollar label class? We could derive it from regular label or regular 80 by 30 label. Maybe the former would make more sense as the characteristic feature of the letter is its size, which is even contained in its name. But the dollar label and the regular 80 by 30 label have more properties in common, which will make the code slightly shorter. So let's opt for the regular 80 by 30 label class and override the width. Let's add the following class rule. Here. Dollar label inheriting from regular 80 by 30 label. And here we override the width to 20. As all four dollar labels share all the properties and there are no differences between them, it's enough to use them like this. Let's find them over here. So, player one, just like this. Dollar label, and all these properties are shared. Player two, dollar label, Player 3, dollar label and player 4, dollar label.
Now, after replacing all the label instances with their corresponding custom labels, the code is now reduced. So, from 360 lines to 270 lines. Not bad. But we can reduce it even more because the labels are not the only widgets that share the same values of properties. Now, let's talk about text inputs. In the settings screen, there are several text inputs. There are two types of them actually. The text inputs where we can enter the player's names, like here, text input. We have some properties, multiline set to false, size hint, none, none, width and height. And we also have text inputs that we use to enter numbers, like the player's initial money, or the number of races, or the time of the game in the ending conditions area here. So here we have multi-line false, size hint none none, width and height. Here the width and height are different than in the other type of text input. Now for the sake of simplicity, let's just create two classes, name input and num input, both inheriting directly from text input. So let's add these two class rules over here. Name input, num input, they both inherit from text input. They share most of the properties but they differ in width. And now we can replace the text inputs in the code with name input and num input respectively. So let's do it right now. First, the name input, which occurs several times in the code, like here, player one, name input, player two, name input, player three, name input and player for name input. Now, as far as the other class is concerned, num input, we have even more occurrences of this in a code. So, here we have, here after the dollar sign, we should be able to enter the number which is the initial money of the player. So we need num input here. And for player two. And for player three. And for player four. And also in the ending conditions area. We have these text inputs over here for the number of races and for the time of the game. Good. Now we reduce the code from 270 to 241 lines of code. Another piece of repetitive code are the two radio button groups. The radio buttons where you can choose the number of players in the players area and radio buttons which you can use to choose an ending condition. As you know, radio buttons are just checkboxes that all have the group property set to the same value. So let's have a look at the radio buttons as they are right now. Here's a players radio button. We have a checkbox, group, players and size hint. And here are the ending conditions radio buttons down here. Group conditions, size hint X. So there are four players radio buttons and three ending conditions radio buttons. Let's create custom radio buttons that inherit from checkbox. So let's add the class rules here. And now we can use these custom radio buttons to replace the regular radio buttons over here. So we don't need the check was here, we just use our custom radio button. 
like this and here and here and here now the condition radio button which occurs here down in the ending conditions so we have one checkbox here let's replace it with our condition radio button which you just created and also here and one more over here now this time the code didn't get much shorter because although the code was simplified we added the class rules at the beginning so the overall number of lines is more or less the same but still it was worth doing because we got rid of the code repetitiveness if you run the program now after making all these changes let's do it now you will see the same window as before I'm going to rub it up for now but I'll come back to the settings screen and simplify it even more when we cover KV properties and IDs. So if you still can see some repetitiveness, don't worry about that. We'll fix that soon. And in the next part, we'll build the screen where we're going to spend most of the time during the game, the race screen. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.